Okay, we took a, about a 10 minute drive around and uh, I'm going to just check the front to see what the temperature is on the front here. That temperature is like 154. I'm going to go to the other side. We're just going to check all four tires right now. That's 169, 167. Uh, the back tire, passenger side. It's 113. Let's go back over to the driver's side rear. The one we uh, re-greased the slides and that's 211 so that didn't do the trick looks like I'm gonna have to replace the uh, rotor uh, not the rotor but the caliper on this side so I guess I'm gonna head to the uh, parts store and try to pick up a caliper okay we back from the auto parts store we got us a nice new shiny caliper and I looked at it it matched what I have and it comes with the bracket so we're gonna have to take this bracket off of here uh, to place it with the new bracket and what we're gonna have to do we're gonna take the actual brake line off and put it where the uh, new brake line should go and it's basically just doing like a, a brake job we got two bigger bolts here that's holding this bracket on that we gotta get off and they're not gonna just fall off so we're gonna have to put a little pressure on them to get them off so right now I'm taking the uh, old caliber off this bracket so I can get uh, this bolt off, get all the brakes out the way before we can get to the bolts behind this bracket. Okay, we're going to try to get these uh, bolts off of the back of these brackets. Uh, this is an 18 millimeter. That came loose pretty easy. I didn't think it would come loose that easy. I must have just had it off one time before. Yeah, they come off pretty easy there. I must have had this bracket off before because normally those bolts wouldn't come off that easy. You had to get a cheetah bar or something to help uh, loosen those bolts. Okay, we got the bracket off. Like I said, just two bolts holding that bracket on. And I just want to make sure everything's uh, kosher. Because, like I said, this brake uh, rotor is hot. And I want to see behind, before I can see my parking brakes behind it. So, I'm going to try to... All you do is just pull it off and you can see your parking brakes. That way you know that they're not froze or stuck. Because if they were stuck, that wouldn't come off that way. So uh, everything looks good back there. Nothing's cracked or broke. So I think we should be good on that. So we're going to put this back on. And just a note, I, I still got the uh, brake line on this old caliber here which is hot because I don't want to have that off no longer than I need it off so um, I'm orient this to the right way because you only can put it in one way if you tried to put it in the wrong way it'd be like that which you can't do that so we're going to put the bolt back in that holds this bracket on This is not a very difficult task, so if uh, you know if you're thinking about taking it to the shop, 
I'm always the one who said don't take it to the shop when you can do it yourself because it's very simple like I said there's only two bolts I'm just trying to get them finger tight then I'm going to get my ratchet in give them the beans so try to tie them up tight as you can get them because that's what's holding your brakes on I mean really give them the beans because you don't want those bolts to come off and your brakes come off or come loose Okay, I got that on. Now we're gonna just basically do a brake job. Okay, on. like I said, I, I'm I move the camera a little closer for you can get a good look at it. So basically, what we're gonna do now is basically a brake job. And I don't want to bore you by doing the brake job, but uh, I'm just gonna show you uh, just taking the bolts loose here. I don't want to get my head anyway, but I gotta this bolt just take the bolts loose like you're doing the brake job before I can get the caliber to, to swing up so I'm just taking the bottom one out so I just took the bottom bolt out before I can Swing the caliber up like this to get, uh, put the new brakes in. Okay, I found the hardware that came with the caliber. So hopefully it fits in there tighter than... It fits in there a little tighter. So we're going to use the hardware that came with the caliber. Not the ones that came with the brake pads. Yeah, that sits in there a little better. Okay, um, like I said, I, just taking out the new brakes. Uh, I'm just putting some of this uh, grease on the end of the brake. A uh, little thing that slides inside the uh, the metal here on the on the caliper here. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a dab at the bottom uh, on both sides here. And just a little bit on top. I don't want to put too much on the actual. Uh, but that's why I, I take the time just to put some on the end of the uh, actual brake pads. Uh, remember, your early warning little metal piece here goes in the uh, back side. Uh, that's the pad to go on the back side. And that's the pad that sits on the piston once when the piston pushes out. I see they got like a 3M little nylon pad here to help with the squeaking. But I normally just put a little, a little grease on the back of that pad and just swirl it around. That's where that piston is going to push on it. But I don't think you originally need it for these pads because they got that little 3M nylon backing on it. But I'm going to do the other side here. Just where these little two pieces of the uh, brake caliber pushes on the pads here. I just like to put a little grease on that. Put a little bit more on that little... I don't want to call it a foot, but a little tab here. So when we lift this up, the piston's already pushed in. So we just want to line the uh, pads up and slide them in place. Remember, the curve part goes 
with the curve of the uh, rotor. Just want to slide them in. So, so now this caliper out. That rotor's hot. So that caliper should just because it's already pushed in. Just making sure the bottom uh, little slide bolt is out the way. There it goes. So now I'm just going to put the uh, the bolt back in the bottom. Remember, we didn't even have to unloosen the top, so the top should be st still tight. You gotta hold the you gotta hold this bolt that's inside the uh on the slide to be able to tighten up the outside bolt. Now we want to take this bolt off the uh old set of calibers here for the uh, brake line. I'm just going to pull this new bolt for the brake line out, screw it out. This is what they call a banjo bolt. It has a hole in the middle. It's got a hole on the side where the fluid goes down in this bolt and comes out the side. And uh, we got this copper washer. Make sure you have that on there. Don't lose that. So we're gonna get maybe 11, 11 millimeter bolt. And you're gonna have some fl fluid come out of here, so that's why I want to do it last. I want to do it quickly too. The quicker you put it on there, the Less fluid leaks out of it. Okay, I got that nut out. As you can see, that fluid just comes out and goes everywhere. That was interesting on this one. It has a copper washer on the top also and it had one on the bottom but the new one just only came with one washer What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reuse the top washer. And I'm gonna put the new washer on the bottom. Oh, no wonder. It's, it's the washers is stuck on the uh on the caliber, okay. That makes sense. Now we got two new washers. So we put one washer on first. one wash on the bottom as you can see that bolt doesn't go all the way down but I'm pretty sure once we tighten it up it would have pulled itself in there to seal itself that's why that wash is it's, it's going to be tight it's like a basically a, 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 a seal all right we're going to get 
Get our ratchet. See, as we tighten it up, it'll pull itself in that washer. And that copper washer and, and seal itself. Alright, we want it good and tight, but we don't want to over tighten it. We got that on there. Everything's tightened up. Now all we got to do left is to bleed the brakes. And I'm going to get some brake cleaner and try to spray off all this fluid that might have got onto the rotors. and the... So I'm going to find me a, an, an assistant to help me bleed these brakes. Okay, what I did was I just opened the uh, the bleeder screw here and just let that fluid gravity feed in here. A lot of people, uh, that's the way they bleed their brakes. They just let it gravity feed. Uh, but I don't have time to sit here and wait just to, to see if that works. So I'm going to get somebody to help me out. I just want to show you guys I'm just letting that drip into my wife's flower pot which no flowers in it so <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get in too much trouble okay I found my lovely son to help me uh, bleed these brakes he's seven so okay Tyson pump it five times and hold it two three four five hold it you got it hold it Hold it. Alright, let it go. Alright, now pump it five more times and hold it again. Hold it. Hold it. Alright, we're going to do it one more time. Yeah, let it go. Alright, you ready? One more time. Five. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, on that one we didn't get any bubbles to come out, so I think that's good. We should be good on uh, bleeding the brakes. So all we got left is to put the top back on and go for another test drive. And hopefully that'll be it. Okay, I just made another trip to the uh, auto parts store to return that core for the uh, caliper. So now I'm going to take the temperature of that rotor and see if it changed from last time. Like last time, when I got back from the actual auto parts store, it was almost 300 something degrees. But now, it's one... 29 128 so I think we fixed that and uh, it wasn't a difficult thing uh, we just had to replace one or two parts and uh, it only took us probably 25 minutes 30 minutes at the most uh, to replace that caliper but uh, I just want to tell you it feels good to be able to just anything that happens to my truck I can go out in my driveway and fix it so don't be scared to try to fix anything on your truck or car uh, that's the only way you're going to learn uh, and I found YouTube is the best way the best resource for any kind of repairs or any kind of thing you need to know so don't be scared to try it that way you can save your money and not have to take it to the shop and let it sit at the shop two or three four five days so like I said I did that in 30 minutes and it only cost me, the, the caliber was like $47. And I bought some brakes to do the brakes, so that was another $40. $40. But at the repair shop, it'll probably cost you $350. And it'll probably sit up there two or three days. But other than that, guys, I thank you for watching again. And until my next video, 